everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have our very first AEW predictions video here on the channel. We have enough figures, I feel like. I wanted to wait until we had enough AEW Unrivaled Collection figures before we really got into doing predictions and reviews of the shows and all of that good stuff. So I think Revolution is going to be the very first pay-per-view that we predict and review here on the channel for AEW, and I'm very, very excited to do so. I know we kind of did like a reaction style video before, but I think we're going to do our actual in-depth reviews that, like we do with WWE and all of their shows. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. AEW Revolution this Sunday. Very excited for the card. I think it's absolutely stacked. I'm actually quite excited for a lot of the matches, and I can't wait to see what happens. Apparently, we have a Hall of Fame-worthy, huge, huge wrestling star coming into the company. We'll get into that and who I think that's going to be, and just, uh, you know, reacting to that entire situation. We also have somebody debuting in the ladder match on this show, which I honestly don't have a, a very good prediction on that one. That could literally be any Anybody. But lots of stuff to get through, lots of thoughts, lots of ideas, guys. So let's go ahead, shut the hell up, dive into AEW Revolution and break down all of my predictions for the show and let you know all of my feelings going into this thing. So that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Actually, you know what? Starting out with the pre-show, Rio and Thunder Rosa taking on Britt Baker and Rebel. I think that Rio and Thunder Rosa will win. I don't know why. I just feel like that's the case. And I only have Rio out of all those figures, so I'm just going to go with Rio, and that'll be it. So getting into our first matchup, guys. We have the Casino Tag Team Royale featuring, I think, like 15 different teams in this thing. Like 15 different tag teams or like 10 different tag teams. So there's a lot of tag teams in this thing, man. It's kind of crazy how many tag teams there are in AEW. But the winner of this style rumble or this rumble rule style battle royal will get a future AEW World Tag Team Championship opportunity. Now coming into this thing, there's so many different teams. It's going to be really hard to narrow it down. But I think there's like three different iterations of the Dark Order in this matchup. And since there's like three different iterations of the Dark Dark Order. Wouldn't you think with those odds they would walk out victorious? But just to throw a wrench in the plans, just to not go along with what everybody else is thinking, I think I'm going to go with Death Triangle. I think Pac and Ray Phoenix, you know, they got that squash match victory. It seems like they're trying to propel them a little bit and build them up a little bit. How big would it be for them to be built up if they were to win here after getting that dominant victory on Dynamite? So I feel like maybe Pac and Ray Phoenix will be the ones to walk out of this thing. I'd love to see Jurassic Express, but my god, they just got beat by FTR and an 80 six-year-old Tully Blanchard, so I don't know. I would love to see, you know, Jurassic Express, my boy Luchasaurus, get in there, get a victory, but I don't think it's going to take place. So I'm going to go with Pac and Ray Phoenix, Death Triangle to get the win here, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know why. That just kind of sits right with me. If it's not these two guys, it will be some iteration of the Dark Order, and yeah, that's what I'm going with. All right, guys, we have a tag team match. Miro and Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford taking on the best friends in Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. Now, I think I'm along with everybody when it seems like, you know, since Rusev slash Miro came came over to AEW. It's been pretty lackluster, right? He hasn't done a lot. He had some squash victories. He's had some dominant wins here and there. But for the most part, he has been spinning his wheels in this feud for a very long time. I think this needs to be the end of this feud, and we need to get Miro slash Rusev into some bigger things. Really, you know, expand upon his talents, upon his work rate, and we really need to get him out of this thing. I think that he really needs a win here, so I'm going to go Miro and Sabian to pick up the win over Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. It really pains me to see Orange go down here, but I think that this will be a very fun and entertaining matchup, but I think Miro needs the victory more than the other team. So I'm going to go Miro with the win, get him out of this feud, let's propel him into something more important, and get this thing going, man. I I'm going to go with Miro to get the win over Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. Next up, guys, is the AEW Women's World Championship match. Now, I don't have either of these ladies, so I'm going to make it real short and sweet so you don't got to look at a freaking graphic this whole time, but we have Sheeta, the champion, taking on Ryo Mizunami. Now, I love Ryo Mizunami. I've been watching her built up. Uh, I think it was like over a year and a half ago, I saw her like first for the first time, and I, I just loved her style in the ring. I thought she was very brilliant. I, she reminds me a lot of Asuka, and I think that she's really damn good, man. She's really good. I've been promoting her a lot on my Twitter, on my Instagram, and if you guys don't know who that is, if you didn't and watch the AEW Women's Eliminator Tournament or the finals with Nyla Rose and her. She's very charismatic. She's very good. And hopefully she wins the championship here, man. I don't know if she's going to be enough to destroy Sheeta and take out her reign, but it would be nice to see. I'd love to see it. I've been waiting for the pandemic to lift so she can get over in the U.S. again. Finally got it to happen. And now we have Ryu Mizunami battling for the championship. I've been dreaming of this day, man. Really make it happen. I'm going to go for her hard here. I'm going to predict her to win. And hopefully that's the case. She can really uplift the women's division, man. Just give her any opponent. 
that she'll beat the hell out of them and lead them to a classic. I'm going Ryo Mizunami, favorite woman on the roster so far in AEW. Make it happen. Next up is a matchup that I'm very intrigued with, guys. We have Adam Hangman Page, or Hangman Adam Page, whatever. I feel like people pick on me for that order. I, I don't care. Who cares, all right? I like Adam. I like Adam Page. Versus Big Money Matt Hardy. Now, this is a very, very interesting stipulation. It's called a Big Money Match, where the winner will receive the loser's 2021 first quarter earnings, which is very big. You know, as a wrestler, you got to make that dough, you know? What, what good would wrestling be if you weren't making some money while doing it as your profession? So, I think, honestly, they don't call him Big Money Matt Hardy for nothing, man. I think Matt Hardy will win. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to defeat Adam Page. I feel like this is a really good way to really develop Adam Page's character a little bit more. Think about the Dark Order, man. Think about him losing that money there. You could do a lot of creative angles with that. For him to lose, give his money to Matt Hardy. That makes Matt Hardy's heel gimmick a lot bigger. Big money. He's making all that money from Adam Page. Then you could have, you know, the Dark Order potentially tying in with Adam Page and everything like that. You could really get creative with that storyline, man. So I'm going to go Matt Hardy for the win, and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. I just hope we get a really good football game. Matt Hardy gets the job done. Uh, I hope it bangs, and I'm going to go Matt Hardy for the win over Adam Page. I just think that allows for a lot more creative opportunities for Matt Hardy if he were to defeat Adam Page here. So, Hangman's going down, and Big Money Matt wins the Big Money match. Next up, guys, we have the Face of the Revolution ladder match for a future AEW TNT Championship matchup. Cody Rhodes versus Scorpio Sky versus Penta versus Lance Archer versus Max Caster versus To Be Announced. We have somebody that is going to be a mystery opponent in this thing. Again, I have no clue who that's going to be, and that's completely outside of the Hall of Fame talent. That is not the same. Tony Khan did mention that that is a completely new talent. So there's two new signings on this show and uh, one of them is the huge, huge star and one of them is uh, this talent right here. And I don't know who the hell that's gonna be. I think it's kind of difficult depending on how big of the name is. They could potentially win this thing. But I feel like it's going to be one of two people. I think it's either going to be Lance Archer or it's gonna be Penta. That is my, that is what my guesses are going to be. As cool as it'd be to see Cody win, I don't see him winning just yet. I think that, I don't think that he would get right back in that TNT Championship picture at this moment. I feel like Penta would be a very interesting choice, of course, when you have Pac and Ray Phoenix as Death Triangle kind of, you know, dominating on their own right. How interesting would it be and make that stable for Penta to win here and get an opportunity at the TNT Championship? So, for those reasons, I think I feel like, I feel like it's going to be Penta or Lance Archer. I feel like they've kind of, you know, they, they have big hopes for him and everything, so I could see Lance Archer also winning, but I'm going to go Penta. I, I just feel Penta for some reason. Think he could give us some entertaining matchups for the TNT Championship. Maybe he'll be the new champion. Who the hell knows? But I'm going to go Penta, and I hope the signing is good. I, I just hope for a really great matchup here. And it is, it's a ladder match. It's AEW. What do you expect? It's going to absolutely slap. No doubts about it. But I'm going to go Penta for the win in a very entertaining matchup. And hopefully it lives up to the hype. Next up, guys, is a street fight. Sort of a tag team street fight. Or I guess a tornado tag street fight, I guess, is what it would be. You have Team Taz and Brian Cage and Ricky Starks taking on Darby Allen and Sting. And again, what is a street fight? Now, I think they changed this to a street fight. I mean, I guess the feud does kind of call for it. These teams have been at each other's throats. Since Sting is getting back in the ring, I feel like the street fight can kind of protect him from his limits in the ring now, you know, in his older age. Sting is still brilliant. I love Sting. He's one of my favorites of all time up there, you know? And so I can appreciate Sting, but Sting and Darby Allen here getting it in, I think that they need to get the victory. I think that Sting and Darby Allen really need to set themselves apart. So if, like, you paired Sting with Darby Allen for what? You, you, you know, you have him mentoring him here, and I feel like if you don't get the win here, it's all for kind of nothing a little bit, you know? I feel like they really desperately need this win, so therefore, I am going to go with Darby, Allen, and Sting to defeat Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. Maybe even Taz takes a bump or two in the street fight. Just hope for some entertaining television, and I think we can get a good football game right here, man. I think Darby, Allen, and Sting get the win. I've enjoyed what we've gotten from both of these teams so far. The moments, the, you know, Darby, Allen coming from the rafters, all the different things. Sting being in AEW is huge. I'm just really excited for it, man. Hopefully this matchup can can slap and live up to the other matches on the card. But Darby Allen will win with Sting in his corner and we'll set off and see what's next for them. Next up, guys, we have a matchup that I am very much looking forward to, the AEW World Tag Team Championship match between the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson, taking on the inner circle in Chris Jericho and MJF with Wardlow in their corner. Now, we don't have AEW World Tag titles just yet, but we will be getting them. I thought about making some quick, like, custom ones, but eh, just, eh, just F it, Brad. You know who the champions are. The Young Bucks coming in defending their tag titles. I believe it was last year at Revolution. They had the best match of the year, possibly the best match in AEW history with Adam Hangman Page and Kim. Omega. Will they do that here again? I don't know because MJF and Chris Jericho don't really work the same style as the Young Bucks. You know,
know, they're not the high flying speed types, crazy all over the ring. They're the more ground and pound characters driven, you know, character driven offense and things like that inside the ring. So I don't know. I think it's going to make for a very interesting match. I can't wait to see how it all plays out. But I think at the end of the day, I think the inner circle is going to win. I don't know how they're going to pull it off. Maybe strength in numbers. Maybe I I'm not exactly sure how it's going to go down. But I think Nick and Matt Jackson are going to lose their tag titles and the inner circle will take over as new champions. And we're going to see where that goes. I think we're inevitably going to get a Chris Jericho and MJF feud. I think that feud is ultimately in inevitable, like Thanos over here. So I think MJF and Chris Jericho win. They'll go on that spill for a while. We'll probably get a rematch on Dynamite or something. Some good feuds here. But I think ultimately, the Inner Circle is going to take over as uh, as tag team champions, and Chris Jericho is going to add another tag title belt to his collection and overall collection as well. So I'm going to go MJF and Chris Jericho in what I hope is a really good game, and hopefully you know Jericho and MJF aren't you know falling behind in this matchup with the Bucks. All right, guys, before we jump into the main event, I want to get into this huge, huge signing. So before we get into things, guys, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I did want to give my thoughts. So apparently at this show, I don't know if the big show is actually going to reveal the big signee or if it's just going to be like the person debuts and it's like, there's the big signing, you know, like maybe they attack the world champion later in the night or I, I don't know what their thinking is going to be, whether big show introduces them, whether it's a backstage segment. I do not know what they're going to be doing, but I think that they've really kind of backed themselves in a corner. You know, with Big Show coming out and saying, Tony Khan, let me know that we have a huge Hall of Fame worthy talent coming in. And not only that, that we have a, you know, this huge, huge star. Apparently, it's one of Tony Khan's favorite wrestlers of all time. Apparently, you know, there's a lot of hype on this thing. So I feel like AEW has kind of set themselves up for failure because if it's not one of like three or four people, everybody's going to be disappointed. But I'm going to give you more realistic options that I think could take place as well. But those really big, like unrealistic signings that they kind of hyped up. So the first one, I have. Brock Lesnar, which would be just, just let's just get the names out first. CM Punk and John Cena. Now again, I don't think it's one of these three. I don't even think it's going to be in the ballpark really of these three, but they said Hall of Fame worthy. They said huge, huge stars in the world of wrestling. They made it seem like they were a huge asset, a major signee. Like they, they were hyping this thing up massive, which makes me think the only way that I, it would really live up to that would have to be a name of this caliber. Other people were mentioning Batista. I don't think that's a thing. You know, I feel like he really did retire at, at WrestleMania 35. I think that was a great way to write off. But I think more realistic expectations for who this signing could be could be Christian, Kurt Angle, or Rob Van Dam. Now, I think this is more realistic of what we can get, but I think this over here would really live up to the hype that they've kind of put on this thing. The only th reason I say that is because I feel like these three guys could still go in the ring, and I feel like these three, well, Christian kind of proved that he can still go, but is he, I love Christian, I think everybody loves Christian, but I don't know if like all the things they said really lives up to the names of these guys. And I want whoever it to be, I want them to be able to go in the ring. I want them to bring huge star power. And I want them to be able to put on matches with the current talent that we have and put on, you know, classics. So these three guys kind of meet the, both criteria. These guys kind of meet kind of the criteria, not really all of the criteria. And not a lot of these guys can really go anymore. Christian can go. I mean, obviously RVD and Christian can still go, but it's not like, I mean, Christian looked fantastic at the Royal Rumble, but I, I don't know, man. I'm just kind of giving you guys my ideas. What do you guys think? Who do you think the big signee is? I just hope I'm not disappointed, but it looks like I'm probably going to be if I'm expecting some crazy ass thing. But can you imagine if it was one of these three? I think it'd probably be one of the biggest wrestling moments of all time. So yeah, man, we're we're I'm excited for sure, but I don't know who the hell it's gonna be, and it's kind of got me stressed the hell out. But we kind of carried it on. I wanted to get all of my thoughts on on this before we get into the main event. So let's shut the hell up and get into the main event. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Omega, the champion, probably my favorite talent in all of AEW, going one on one with John Moxley, exploding barbed wire death match for the AEW World Championship. Now, you're not going to get a football game like this in WWE, Brad. You're not going to... I don't know how far they're going to push the limits, but I'm excited. I feel like we're going to get blood. I feel like we're going to get some crazy-ish. I'm excited, man. I think one of my favorite things about AEW is it really... It blends modern wrestling with the edginess of the ruthless aggression and the attitude era, which is really what sets them apart for me. Like, they might not have all the bells and whistles that WWE has, and they may not have the longevity, or they may not have all of the star power that WWE WWE has, but the edginess that they bring to the product is really one of those things that hooks me, and the they, they have logic for the most part. You know, the illogical stuff in WWE really drives me up the damn wall. Besides all that, man, I'm really looking forward to this main event. I cannot wait to see what the hell goes on here, but at the end of the day, we're predicting the outcome of the matchup, and I think Kenny Omega will retain the AEW Championship. It just makes the most sense to me. I think that it's too early to, you know, flip the title back over to Moxley. I think Moxley's going to go away for a while after 
after this matchup. Maybe he takes some ridiculous, crazy Hell's Gate style bump where he takes a one winged angel off the top of a damn structure and it's like, oh my God, Brad, and he has to get written off television maybe for a little bit and then he comes back big. I think that I think that AEW really needs to like implement a huge WrestleMania or like Royal Rumble style event. I feel like they need to get creative. They need to get in the creative boardroom and they need to come up with something crazy so that they can uh, make for these epic moments that, that wrestling fans love so much. But overall thoughts, man, I'm going Kenny Omega for the win. I, I know he's been constructing some like eliminating thing. He, he was constructing it on AEW Dynamite. So maybe we're going to get some crazy-ish, man. I mean, I know we're going to get crazy-ish, but some, some crazy Moxley style eliminator is what it, Kenny Omega was constructing. But man, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to find out who the talent is and just it makes me very excited to be a wrestling fan when we get big shows like this with all this talent and all this hype and just I'm, I'm super excited man I can't tell you about it if you have never watched AEW you don't have any interest in it I would just say give the show a chance man just order the show and watch the show I think it's like 50 bucks which is kind of steep but they don't have a pay-per-view every single month so you know at the end of the day you're just spending 50 bucks and you're waiting a few months until you pay another 50 bucks so it almost adds up to the total cost it almost adds up to the cost of like four months of WWE Network or, or Peacock or whatever the hell's going on but that is going to do it for my AEW Revolution predictions guys let me know what you think down in the comment section below I think this is a pretty long one I think I, I I mean Jesus Christ a lot of matches to cover a lot of stuff to cover but I think the show's gonna slap absolute titties let me know what you think of everything down in the comment section below let's get into our random shout out before we get the hell out of here this shout out is gonna go to bullet boy who says when is the next pick fed episode coming out it was one of the top comments and I wanted to address this because I've been trying bro I feel like I don't know it's more like me it's like my mental capacity but it's like I, I want to push through for you guys because I want to get these shows out way more often. I just think I have to get over a mental hurdle, and once I get over that mental hurdle, we're going to be going. It's just, I don't know, man. I feel like I let you guys down a lot, and I try my best to get the shows out as quickly as I possibly can, but then, like, I go through these episodes where I'm just, like, in a mental fog, and I don't want to be like that for you guys, and I try my best to push through, so I really appreciate you guys waiting. I really appreciate you guys watching the channel, and just all your positive feedback really goes a long way, so I really appreciate it, man. We're going to get through these shows. We're going to get to My Damn Nation. It's going to be absolutely epic and grand. And uh, I love you guys. Don't cross the line or you'll end up, uh, you'll end up like, uh, I, 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 uh, you'll end up like this.